hope I wasn't doing that. Are you doing a video? Welcome to Fabled Hunters. I'm Ryan. I'm Saint. And we're going to go through some stuff. Yes, we are going to go through some stuff today. We're not opening anything because we have a huge collection on our hands. Yes. Saint and I bought this collection back in October of last year. Yeah, 2020. We paid 26000 for the collection, which yeah. was well below what the gentleman was asking for. Absolutely. He started out uh, sky high thinking that he could get forty. Maybe even 50000 is what it was worth. But um, we talked to him. It was a tough time. And um, we took the risk, right? I, I, I drove up. It was a Sunday morning. I drove up with a minivan. Um, I, I knew how big the collection was, but you don't really know until you, you see it. Until you carry 300 yeah. boxes and make multiple trips yeah. in the van, right? And so, yeah, I took, you know, we, we locked in the deal. Loaded up a van full of stuff, and then I came back with a U-Haul trailer uh, later that afternoon, and we finished up uh, loading it. I put it all in the garage under a tarp, nice and neat. Yeah. And uh, then I we kind of slowly worked its way down here and into this. This is my basement, uh, and we've been working on it for the better part of a year now. A year, a little over a year. Anniversary was a month ago. Yeah. Um, let's provide some value to our viewers. I, I would say that part of our uh, consideration was um, how do we get out of the deal or what can we get out of the deal, right? Right. So um, what would you say rule number one would be in collection buying? Sure. So obviously with the one and a half million cards, you don't want to be sitting on this forever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I want yeah, my yeah. basement back at some point. Uh, yep. you know, fortunately, I have the luxury of not needing the space so, uh, for anything else. Yeah. Um, so rule number one, I would say would be or, or – you know, something that I, I think we went into this looking at having a plan. Yep. We wanted a, a, an exit strategy as far as how are we going to get this one and a half million cards? How are we going to make money and how are we going to reduce the volume to a point where, you know, it's, it's much more manageable because as you'll see in a couple minutes, there's, it's everywhere. Uh, it's everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not only in the basement, it's upstairs. There's extra rooms, yeah. extra closets of cards and long boxes and I mean, um, these, it was a good, good mix of four row and five row long boxes, right? So four row long boxes probably hold about 5,500 cards, 5,000 to 5,500. Somewhere around and there. And then um, the five row long boxes, probably 65 to 7,500 cards. Yep. So That's kind of, yep. yeah, exactly. between that, you, you, you do the math, it's um, probably 300 um, boxes, right? Four to five rows and average out call it 6,000, and not all of them were full, but we're, we're dealing with at least 1.5 million cards. Yeah. And what, what Ryan just said about exit strategy is absolutely correct. We went into it and we said, what is the worst case scenario? And thankfully, although the cards are no longer here, thankfully um, there was a near entire legend set, yes. right? Yep. Um, handful of Arabian Nights cards, really nice some ones. of the rares, yeah. I think um, King Suleiman, um, Serendib Jin, a couple of pyramids, Serendib Gafri, those aren't real big, pyramids but... a couple of mid levels. There's a small, very, very small stack of alpha, right? There's an alpha IC manipulator, some betas, some yep. unlimited, yeah, beta and unlimited. There was a force of nature in alpha, and yep. those rares are really tough to come by. So, antiquities, like, I mean, we, antiquities, it was a nice, yep, it was a nice balance of, of old school. Um, and then just a ton of Silver Age stuff, which we like, and we've yeah you know, we haven't even really started scratching the surface on that. But so so when we were going in, I I, I know you mentioned to our viewers that mm -hmm. we paid twenty six k. What was our thought process? Would you say? So when I went to this gentleman's house, uh, I sat down and I he wanted forty. Uh, and basically, we had Saint on the other end of this conversation as well because he this was a local buy, so he wasn't uh, he wasn't yeah, this there. This is in Wisconsin, yep. so I, I could only FaceTime and. We had to go offline and have separate phone calls, like a little huddle. So, yeah. Exactly. So uh, basically, I sat the guy down. And I said, "Show me forty grand. Where, mm -hmm. Where's the forty grand coming from? I want to see, you know, the eighty twenty rule. I want to see where eighty percent of the value is up front, because all of this other stuff, there's no way that I could possibly go through all this in this guy's basement and, 
you know, a month more or less, you know, yeah. a couple hours that I was there. So uh, he broke out a couple of binders where we were looking at the legends, yep. Arabian Nights, the Antiquities, the Alpha. A the, ABU. You know, exactly. Yep. The, the big stuff. And, you know, I, I told Saint, you know, I said, there's easily 40 grand, I, I would say, just by looking at that core group of stuff mm -hmm. minus everything else you know if, if we can get a deal and 40s retail so retail, yeah. we obviously wanted so the wholesale i think you 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 said that the wholesale with the condition mm -hmm. given the time is still earlier in the pandemic i think you had said something like 22. i, I like, thought we could like come the up. cash price was twenty two thousand. Yes. worst case scenario and that's when we negotiated we we're like okay so we're basically worst case scenario the the top cards uh, we sell out 80% of the value. We're getting 22000 And, uh, I mean, it was still, there's still risk there. There's still uh, yeah, driving. Yeah, there's still work. We found some inked cards. But um, our assessment was, our exit strategy is, let's let's get this twenty two k, or let's get at least, make sure 80-20, like you said, 80% of the value is there. And we talked it down to 22. And um, we did sell those cards yep. and exit. Thankfully, uh, because we took the risk, because things got better uh, towards the end of 2020 and earlier 2021, there was a big spike. If uh, viewers ha didn't hear about it, there's a big collectibles, big trading card game spike. Mm -hmm. um, everything went up. We liquidated. We not only broke even. Um, we did some other stuff. Do you want to talk well, about yeah, that? We we drastically underestimated. I think the value up front. You know that 22 was being very conservative, but to to the point, we had a plan. Um, we we reduced our risk by saying this is our floor. If we can get it for anything less than twenty two, we'll be fine. Yep. Because of all of the other volume, there's got to be. We figured just bulk alone, we could yep. probably get there. Probably at ten fifteen k yeah. if we put in the work. And there was some sealed boxes that you know we didn't really use in the equation as far as figuring out how much they were. There were a lot of foreign boxes. Yeah, foreign Re sealed product. Really hard to to you know, pull a value and say, well, this box is worth a thousand bucks. So it was a little bit of work uh, figuring the, the value on that stuff out. But um, just a lot of hidden gems too. I mean, we're yeah. going through stuff that wasn't in those binders that probably should have been, um, you know, a couple of unlimited um, icy manipulators we just came across. Yeah. So there, unlimited there's ices just been... and a couple of unlimited rares. And now we're just going through these cards, yeah. uh, four or five row by four or five row. And um, we're organizing everything and we're just uncovering stuff. We'll, we'll look at that a little later, but again, um, just to wrap up rule number one, go in with a plan, understand your exit strategy, understand your risk. Yep. Now, I know that to some viewers, a $26,000 collection sounds like a lot. Guys, this is just a real case study. Um, I've been in deals 50 to 100 times larger, and I've been in deals smaller, but this is uh, honestly for me, and Hopefully for you too. The, this is the largest volume you've ever done in your oh, life in absolutely. terms of a collection, right? Absolutely. And and looking back, if I would have gone into this by myself, I, I, I Saint's been awesome with all this stuff. His knowledge yep. and whatnot. Um, you know, he he touches so many different areas in the market. But I would not have done this big of uh, of transaction by myself. Not not yep. the dollar. It wasn't the dollar amount. It's the it work. It was just the sheer amount of work. Yeah. Um, you know, even though I could have looked at that and said, wow, yeah, 22 grand, easy money. You know, if you ask me, a lot of work, but easy money. I wouldn't have done it by myself. So it's, Absolutely. it's pretty yeah. nice. It's also a great experience. Um, this past year, I've gotten to come up here, I think, six or seven oh, times. Couple, yeah, it's been great. And, um, you know, although I already have work in Chicago, yeah. take a two-hour drive up here on the weekend. And, I mean, outside of the fun, though. It is a lot of work. I, I'd say every weekend we've put in about 40 oh, yeah. hours of work we're, right? between we're, Friday and Sunday. 40 hours. Yeah. And between two days, like this this past weekend, I don't think I've slept eight hours, maybe no. eight and a half hours I these mean, two days combined. I think Friday, well, Saturday morning, I think we finally went to bed at like five or six yep. in the morning. I, 6.30 for yeah, me. Yeah, slept, slept a couple hours and yeah, then just got went up back at, at a 10. 10, 10.30. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I think last night we were getting a little, or this morning I should say, we got a little tired at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. Yep. But that's after. And then up at 9, 10 again right. and, and back to so, it. So, yeah, you, you really got to like doing this. We don't treat this not as work. work. Yeah, we don't treat this as just just to make money, obviously. 
Um, the money doesn't hurt. No. And we can buy other cards with it. But we're not stashing this in our bank account. You're buying more magic cards. I'm using this project's proceeds to buy more flesh and blood. And we just wanted to give the audience an idea of how it's actually done. Because if you're buying a $2,000 collection, if you're buying even a $250 collection or a $20,000 collection, you know, the, the mindset is the same. Yeah. I, well, I mean, that, the Monarch box that I opened up last night, that was funded by, you know, proceeds from this, basically. Yeah, yeah. I roll... He, he you know, rolled some into Monarch, yeah, which is great. And yeah. then, uh, I would say organization. I know you were talking about, you know, things to kind of consider when doing of the course. project of this. Yep. You got to be organized. We're going to show you a little, you know, some of the stuff that we've kind of done along the way. Nothing, you know, groundbreaking. Nothing groundbreaking. Just... As a matter of fact, let's let's break it down. Sure. All right? Tell, tell you what, let's go to the overhead, let's go to the cam, sure. and um, I'll show them what we did this uh, past weekend. Awesome. Awesome, let's do it. Okay, so this is the workspace. Really quickly, like I said, we wanted to bring value to the viewers, wanted to show you guys what's really being done. So, real quick, I'll give you guys an example. These are just boxes. This is probably, you know, tens of thousands of cards just lying around. I'll randomly grab this and uh, show you. This is, there's no organization here. This is horrible. Ooh. Oops, is horrible, and it's a pain in the butt. And look, there's sleeves, sleeves, different sets, but they're all rares. Look, that's a that's a master set, master 25. That's a foil from Cons. That's a Dominaria rare, M19. So really quickly, this is this is how it's done. We we've got these rows over here, and immediately look these sleeves. People are like, oh, these sleeves are a penny each. Who's going to use these sleeves? That will uh, lead us directly into rule number two, which is waste nothing. Conserve as much as you can, because I just mentioned we had 300 long boxes, we've got hundreds of thousands of sleeves, and we even keep all our sleeves, we keep all our long boxes, we keep these boxes because you never know when you're gonna need them. Um, during the pandemic, I think these got up to about $3 a piece or close to three cents a sleeve. I think, I, I remember for sure, these um, uh, semi, not semi ridges, these top loaders were up to 50 cents a piece. So conserve as much as you can, waste nothing. And uh, I'll get deeper into it. And I mean, just be efficient. Look, these, these sleeves get in the way and some of these cards, you're not going to need, you're not going to keep in your collection, it's not gonna be worth it to list. So when you bulk things out, like Ryan found a uh, nice local buyer of bulk, bulk buyers don't want to de-sleeve their own cards. It's just extra hassle for them. So really quick, let's see if there's any relevant cards in the sets that I'm collecting. There's some masters over there, what's over here? I don't think I'm doing Fate Reforge. No. Oh, there you go. There's a little War of the Spark Rare, Massacre Girl. What else? What else? What else? Okay, there's another Modern Masters 2 Rare that goes over there. Oh, Rommel's back. More Modern Masters 2. We've got a uh, Masters 25. Say hi, Rommel. Aww. Literally back from his run. So, here we go. Here we go. Oh, there's some cons. That's a, that's a cons rare foil. Retribution of the Ancients. I don't know what that's worth, but um, yeah. Oh, the Lich's Mastery from Dominaria. Put that there in the Dominaria pile. And an M19, Liliana's Contract. There you go, Liliana's Contract, a rare. And then the rest, I'll just put in a pile for later. Put it in that pile. That's to review for later. So we're filtering out some sets I know, like, um, what is it, Steros Beyond? Um, Throne of Eldraine, 21, 20, War of the Spark, Ravnica Allegiance, this is Guilds, and all the Master Sets, and Core 19. So, again, guys, don't waste anything. These, these are gold. When you sell bulk, when you sell on TCG Player, the team bags are valuable, the sleeves are valuable. If they're buying a 10 cent card, or even a 50 cent card, um, why use new sleeves? Just save everything, conserve everything. Again, uh, we, we just went out and bought these. These are eight to $10 a piece, and the collection came with about 300 of them. Um, if we went and bought them, that would be 2,400 to $3,000. So this 
is invaluable. It's invaluable to conserve. Um, and you know, this is paper, but the top loaders and the sleeves are plastic. So you know what? You're also helping the environment by reusing the sleeves. So yeah, um, let's get into the quick value. A, a lot of people think that um, cards and collections are all about the expensive cards. Look right here. This is all not very expensive at all. Here's M19 commons. Here's some commons and uncommons from um, Ixalan, Rivals of Ixalan, Dominaria. All these cards are under the threshold of what we said we'd be interested in listing. Uh, Ryan, what, what was the threshold for you, did you say? Uh, usually it's anything under 50 cents in TCGL, ignore. Under under 50 cents? Yeah. Or if we have multiples, maybe like even it, 30, 25, 30 cents, something it, like that. It depends on the age as well. Yep, so yep. the older the card, I'll be a little bit more uh, lenient yeah. on, that, on that 50 cent threshold. Yeah, so on, on the really low end, um, just to show you guys what what work is actually being put in. On the really low end, we basically have to uh, separate the, the wheat over here from the chafe, right? And here's some foils. These are not very valuable. This is cool, but it's not valuable. Um, some rares, right? Uh, these are just not bulk, but you know, it's still not worth listing them on uh, TCG player eBay. Um, there's something in the sub a dollar range over here. If you take a look, here's some quick foils. Even this, this token's worth a couple bucks, I think. Rowdy Crew, some rares, right? Like, this came in the collection. This is a pretty, pretty, you know, pretty good distribution for a collection. These uncommons have some value to it. Siren Storm Tamer. Yeah, and we're just picking out, let's just say on average, the cards are worth 40 to 50 cents. Um, why leave them in the collection, right? Like, take them out, you can list them, 8, 10 at a time, 10, 15 at a time, right? And uh, even even these, even these these tokens are collected by people. Lastly, in every single set, we've got the uh, dollar plus cards, the slight value there. Look, the foil is like 6 bucks or something like that. These are worth a handful of dollars. These are worth a couple of dollars. Fleet Swallowers, Roska's Contempt is a couple bucks, I think. Raptor, I think, was more than that. Dagger's a few bucks. Amulet, Compass, Treasure Maps. This is worth like 10. These lands are worth a couple. Mm -hmm. Look, like we went through Rivals of Ixalan, and yeah, Chupacabra is good. These Legendary Planeswalkers are okay. Mythics are good, right? They're worth a couple of bucks each. This used to be a big card. See, Rares, Rares, Storm the Vault. It's worth a couple bucks. It's actually a really good card. It basically becomes a Telerian Academy. All right. Um, oh, see, look, we went to the uncommons. Is it worth it to go through uncommons and discover stuff like this? A pitiless plunder, uh, a dirtily weird, um, I think a sp specific deck build around card is worth $12.50. And we, want, we went and got 10 copies. That's 125 bucks, as well as a, you know, a couple one, $2 cards. This is all worth it. This is all lucrative. This is all, you know, valuable to the right people. So let's go through one more thing. Same thing, same thing in Dominaria. I have these sleeved so that these are for quick listings, right? We've got uh, a couple dollar cards. I think this is a commander. Shalai's worth like six bucks. These are $2 cards, $2 cards. Buck here, buck there. Same thing, Primate Glorious Rebirth. This is like a $15 card. Mm -hmm. Strongholds, these are five, six bucks. This is all value. This all came from boxes uh, that, you know, somebody else didn't want. Um, again, we go to the uncommons. There's still value in the uncommons. Final parting's worth a couple of bucks, and there's a lot of them. And even uh, Tatiova, Benthic Druid. This gal, she's a good, you know, good, good creature. Five, uh, land comes in, you gain a life, you draw a card. And I mean, we've got, what, like, almost... 40 copies of her here and it's all valuable damping spheres are worth like a buck 52 bucks each you don't want to throw that away even even down to the commons of dominaria you've got rat colonies i think these are like 250 a piece so look 5 10 15 20 25 26 26 times 250 that's probably like 60 65 dollars like for you viewers at home, 
if you have a collection at home with you know all, all these cards, why leave value in there? Why leave 65 bucks of Rat Colony in your collection? Spend a couple hours and um, you know take it out, extract the value. And even at the end, there's something to be said about this. Like these are probably stacks of close to a thousand cards, maybe 800, maybe 1200, who knows? But there are people that buy bulk. Uh, they pay anywhere from five on the low end to seven dollars on the high end per thousand cards. So that's uh, 25 by call it five bucks. That's still 125 bucks that you can extract out of cards that you want nothing to do with. And look here, we probably have gone through about a thousand, thousand five hundred dollars in value just over here. This was done last night, and then we've got this. We've got more bulk. So let's just call that anywhere from twelve to fourteen hundred dollars, or twelve to seventeen hundred dollars if this is one point five on the high end. Um, and that's that's all value. That's all work that you're doing. That's for stuff you don't want. You never want to see again. Of course. You put in a lot of work. We both put in about 40 hours this weekend, but uh, there's more stuff, there's more stuff. So yeah, rule number two, don't waste anything. Um, extract value where you can and um, help, uh, help conserve. Reuse the top loaders, reuse the plastic. So I'm gonna give you a little tour of the basement and kind of what we've been working on. This is already cut down, right? Oh yeah, we've already, we've already bulked out probably 250,000, maybe 300,000 cards. Uh, from the last couple of trips that, that San has made. So we've we've already bulked out quite a bit. I have my TCG office upstairs that has quite a few cards that are listed for sale, probably I'd say 5,000 or so. Um, then we've got a couple of lawn boxes upstairs or 5,000 count boxes full of stuff. But uh, I thought I would just highlight a couple of stuff here. This is kind of stuff that we're kind of targeting to go through sooner rather than later it's been you know we've done some core samples and we've seen that the box has some stuff that uh, we want to take a closer look at uh, then we've kind of we tried to find a home for every card that we come across now that's not always possible because i think magic has well over a hundred and something sets so we try to cover the big name stuff and i don't know if you can see well, i'm sure you can i've kind of labeled everything and then i've got you know a picture of the symbol because some of these sets you know, I've been playing for a long time, but some of these more uh, newer sets I'm not quite as familiar with. Um, this overflow was just caused over the weekend from all the work that we've done. And I'll just roll this stuff into like a lawn box or another 5,000 count box to keep it all organized. I'll show you a little bit more on that in a little bit. Some cool little accessories that we have that we're, uh, we're going to list. You know, things that don't mean a whole lot to us, but might lean something uh, to somebody else. This is actually really cool. I think these sell for a couple hundred bucks, really uh, old school stuff. Um, more boxes of, of stuff that we've kind of gone through. You can see what, what Saint was kind of working on over this weekend, but we've got more boxes over here. I'll let you slide in there. This stuff has all got to get gone through and you can see there's no organization whatsoever. A lot of signed stuff, which is cool. Some foreign stuff mixed in. Um, some sealed product that we kind of talked about, even really cool stuff. I'm a, I'm a rapper junkie. So I really like some of this, you know, old ice age, fourth edition revised. I think this stuff is really cool. Um, I have a, a little a display I'm kind of working on for some of this stuff. So, um, really cool stuff that you kind of kind of come across in a collection. You don't have to sell it. If you don't want to because it's you know if it means something to you you can see the the boxes with yellow tags that's stuff that we've been that have been gone through sorted as far as set wise but it still needs to be gone through to to extract value um really cool little play mat here we're gonna we're gonna probably auction this off the, the these are really rare um and they don't come up for sale all that often. What what is that? A tempest a free? Uh, I, yes, and it's signed. Yep. Or fren no fanatic. Fren frenetic free. Fren that's free. right. Yep. That's right. That's uh, drawn by the artist, right? Yep. Oh, and wow. signed, I think it was. And I brought in some extra shelving. This stuff isn't normally here. I brought it to help reduce the burden on some of the tables. And yeah. What this stuff. this was overloaded. This is mm -hmm. completely full, and it went to the shelves earlier in the weekend but we're, we're getting through it we're yeah, getting through it. all of the uh the used up boxes here so a lot of this you know not only were more cards in five thousand count boxes they also filled up boxes like this um 
And then you can probably see over here, we'll walk you over here real quick. I actually just finished shopping here. I built this to help. But all the fat packs, these were all, well, not all, and most of these were had cards in them, but I was getting tired of going through and taking them, uh, you know, what has stuff in it, what doesn't. So I just emptied any fat pack that I could see and put it in either a long box or something else that's a little easier to stack. So we'll even sell these. I've got a, an ad out on our local Facebook page to try to find, you know, if somebody, buy, if somebody wants a buyer of Amon Cat or Zendikar, you know, some of these older ones are kind of cool. Um, so that's, that's all up for grabs. And then this is all kind of putting full art land. I mean, we just have so much stuff. This is some older school land. So we try to keep organized to Saint's comment earlier about organization being... Did old. you just make that up? Older school? Old, old school. So old, old <laughs> You're like older school. There's, there's old school, there's older school. That's right. <laughs> and then this is basically a walk through, you know, magic history. I know my set is a little off here. When I started, a lot of this is built on muscle memory because you kind of remember where... Uh, certain sets go. Yep. This is how I started it, so I didn't really want to reverse it because our Ice Age princess. Yeah. And Ice it, Age it's got a special place in his I, heart. I do. I'm, I'm an <laughs> Ice Age princess. <laughs> so I mean, and this is only a small majority of what's already been gone through. Yep. But this is just where we put it, and then it goes down here when it's full, or upstairs, or wherever else. I mean, we've got stuff everywhere. So, so these are all near full, full or near full. Yep. Two rows, long boxes, and five rows and there's more, of their respective sets, yep. right? And there's more behind you, all underneath this table here. All the sets through time. It's like a walk through time for yeah, magic, walk right? Magic history. Right yeah. And this should all be in uh, chronological order, except, you know, I don't put in master sets and stuff like that because I kept all those over on the other side and core sets. But this is the release of, you know, magic and how it came. So, yeah, a lot of this was not even filled up or not overflowing before the weekend, but... We did damage. Yep. We uh, did damage to the collection. This is already, keep, this is a year later already, right? I try to keep it neat and organized. I mean, we, we, we've got to be organized. And so you don't want big piles of cards falling over into other areas and stuff like that. Yeah, so, you, you, you touched upon that. That's rule number three, right? Rule number three. Especially with the dog. You'll walk by here sometimes and maybe like his tail or something will brush. So we, at, at the end of filming and stuff like that, we're gonna take all this stuff down and put it in a line boxes or, or 5,000 count boxes. There's even more on this side here. You've got um, some of the commander sets here. Oh wow, you got it really, really granular. Yep. That's then, all the commander sets. Um, I do have one home here. This is kind of for just one-off sets. There's like a lot of like dual planeswalker decks and stuff like that that are, are one-off. Um, but then I've got, you know, all of Amon Cat, Aether Revolt, Kaladesh. Really fun sets to play. Um, and like Saint said, this, is, this isn't this is work. I enjoy looking at cards, going through them. Um, and then one other point that I would add that this, this, this uh, acquisition allowed us to do is buy other little smaller bolt-on yep. um, collections as they come available because we now have the... The capacity to like, oh, I've got a TCG store. If I find something that we could scoop up and and add value to the collection, we do. Um, so I mean, it's it's been a really fun adventure, and I'm we're just scratching the surface. I mean, we've extracted a lot of value already, but now we're working on you know volume and extracting even more out. So so yeah, uh, Ryan's absolutely right. Stay organized. Um, Sometimes, if especially if you have a partner in the deal, uh, there's not one way to organize things. Like, probably on day two, like Saturday night, um, after we've already been fed up with each other and we've been <laughs> grinding, you know, these cards for 20 some odd hours. Um, yeah, we usually get frustrated and talk about different ways to organize, but just have a cohesive way, have a plan on organization as well. And remember that you need to separate you need to separate by value. You could separate by set. And uh, especially with the larger the collection, the worse it is with double work. Try not to create double work for yourself and just know how to extract the value from your collection. Number one, have an exit strategy. Know your exit strategy. Have a plan. Number two, conserve everything. Reuse everything. It also helps the environment. And number three, 
uh, stay organized, understand where all your cards are, have a plan on how you're going to split your cards, list your cards, sell your cards, even enjoy your cards. Because some of these items in this collection, um, Ryan, you've, you've enjoyed some of it personally, right? Something really cool to me because it's one of my favorite cards. Wow, it came in the collection. And it came in the collection. And it was one of those things where it's actually signed. Yeah. Pretty decent condition. Obviously not gradable, but... Christopher Rush. They're not They're not making any more of that something rare. to me. And this was... We, I didn't even know that this was part of the collection. Yeah, it just came in. We just found it. Yep. Right? So something like that. There's There's been many little things like that where it's like, wow, this is really cool. Yep. Okay, so like we both said earlier, we're not doing this for money. We're doing this because we're passionate about the game. And what I'm the most passionate about is where Magic began, 93 and 94. And this is just stuff that we uncovered this weekend. Same thing, we've got Fallen Empires. And everything's upside down because, pro tip, it doesn't need to be a rule. When you're sorting cards, you got to sort upside down so that you know what set it is. Because the set symbol is on the left, right? Or, well, it's on the right, but when you're sorting cards... Yeah, that, that's how you know the set symbol. That, that's how you know where to put everything. So uh, I, I've been sitting here. I've sorted Fallen Empires, Homelands, Ice Age, Alliances, Mirage, Visions, Weatherlight, Tempest, all the way down, all the way down to, I think this is um, Apocalypse, and this is Judgment, right? Yes. And then there's a, the Master Set Pile, Portal, even promo cards. It's just a stack of cool promo cards over here. Let me turn around. Ooh. Those are arena lands. That's a weird promo foil. That's an that's an ar arena. That's an arena. The book promo. There's another one here. Italian legends. Italian legends signed card from Mark mm -hmm. Poole. Sarah's Sanctum. We've even got foreign cards like this is a Legends Winter's Blast. Rogath of Care Keep. K K Takahashi. The Medusa's cool. Black Vice. Black bordered. Yeah, Japanese lightning bolt is really cool. Abu Jafar from a f another language bunch of italian legends italian legends is really cool it's still you know oh deep spawn that's a that's a nice italian legends mm -hmm. rare there's still value there because it's not like real legends i mean it's the same art as real legends the color is a little more saturated and it's still probably valued at a third of the original legends card and um i mean they're not making any more legends cards a couple of uh mishra's factories and black border yeah oh uh, Winds of Change. That's really cool. Tomb of Alcor. Good old American 94. Stone Calendar, Lurker, Ragman, Nameless Race, Nile Sylvain. Really, really cool. The Dark is okay. Legends, I like better. Elves of Deep Shadow. These are like 10 bucks a piece. Mm -hmm. Yep. Legends, Urborg, Lifeblood, a real Merkin. Legends Rare right there. We've got Remove Enchantments. What else? And this is just random. I don't I don't determine what comes out. Mana battery. And then we've got antiquities. Reverse polarity. Reconstruction. Millstone. Millstone's cool. What else? What else? And uh, gremlins. Oh, and a cursed rack. Chrome Mox, even though it's in Masters, it's worth like 60, 70 bucks. What else? Shackles. Uh, Teferi. Promo. Liliana. Good old Lily. Mm -hmm. She's looking sexy. Actually, she's a little too thin. She looks a little emaciated there. Um, oh, Replenish is huge. That's like a $120 card, and so is the... I think this is the only foil version of Necropotence, right? Uh, of the original art, yes. Yeah, of the original art. Yes. All right, and we've got the good old core sets. Really cool, seven foil. Ock is a real, real rare. Thorn Elemental is the most printed seven foil ever, so that's not very valuable. I'd prefer the Ock. The Griffin. Got some uh, good old 94 revised cards. We've got Northern Paladin. This is the fruit that the collection bears. So nothing's set up this way. Nothing's planted. This is just really what you get out of a weekend. Royal Assassin. That's really cool. It's worth a couple bucks. A couple rares. Dark Pack and Goblin King. Okay, that's a nice Goblin King. His condition. Ooh, that's really nice. I'll have to take a better look at it. Uh, Hippie. Another royal, clock, rituals are cool, animate walls are rare, magnetic mountain. Oh, okay, now we got to the good stuff. See, we, we've hit a little spike, we hit a little batch of good old 93 unlimited cards. Fungosaurs on the unlimited rare, not in the best condition, well loved, but still, 
I mean, this is not anything we expected. Sacrifice. Unholies are worth a couple bucks a piece. That's a lot of unholy strength. Crawworms, iconic. Drain lifes. A couple of drain lifes. Weakness. White knights are valuable. So are dark rituals. Those are nice. Regens. Three death laces. And even two beta lands. Two beta islands. These are in demand these days. Like I said earlier, like you, you do this for fun. I do this for fun. We graded out a couple of cards, and these are now Ryan's because he he took them out of the collection. This this is for Ryan. Got it graded in uh, nine point five, and uh, this came from the Legends collection. Just uh, you know, from this buy. Uh oh, uh oh, it's invoke the woke. Don't kill the d thumbs down button, everybody. But we did get it from the collection. Um, iconic art. Uh, this is of the Spanish Inquisition. A lot of people these days try to misrepresent what Harold McNeil was trying to do. But um, yeah, this is a really unique card because it's blue, 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 blue. And it was from Legends and they're trying to cancel this card. So, hey guys, as a person of color, you know, Harold McNeil probably wants my yellow ass hanging from a tree. But I still appreciate the card for what it is and its place in the hi the history of this magic TCG. So... Hope you guys get it. Hope you guys learn something. Um, you know, obviously when you go into a deal, you want to make your money back. You know, if you're willing to put in the work and you're willing to enjoy this experience for what it is, I always, you know, say to stick to those basic ground rules of collection buying and just have a great time with it, everybody. Hope you learned something today. Uh, hit the uh, like button, subscribe, twiddle the notification bell, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye. One point five million card collection, at least. Yeah, at least. So, uh, do do you want to review uh, where we're at so far? Sure. So, as we showed you a little bit earlier, uh, there's going to be a ton of stuff that we're going to show you. It's we should start over. Sorry. It's okay. I fucked it up. No. Let's start over. No. Let's just start over. No, just... I started over. And then go. Start over. <sighs> if you insist, buddy. I messed it up.